Welcome to this second presentation on the infectious diseases of Barramundi and health management. My name is Kate Hudson and I'm a senior lecturer at James Cook University in Queensland, Australia. I also lead the Marine Parasitology Laboratory in the Centre for Sustainable Tropical Fisheries and Aquaculture. So in the first presentation, I gave you an introduction into Barramundi or Asian sea bass aquaculture and highlighted some of the key viral, bacterial and fungal diseases. In this second presentation, we'll focus on protozoan and metazoan parasites. Protozoans are a diverse group of unicellular eukaryotic organisms, many of which are motile. Protozoans commonly range from about 10 to 52 micron, but some can grow as large as one millimetre and can be easily observed using a microscope. Some parasitic protozoa have life stages alternating between proliferative stages and dormant cysts. As cysts, protozoa can survive harsh conditions, such as exposure to extreme temperatures or harmful chemicals, or long periods without access to nutrients, water or oxygen. Parasitic protozoan trypanosomes of the genus Trypanosoma are flagellates that infect the vascular system of fishes and they can cause anemia and lethargy. Leeches and other blood feeding parasites are intermediate hosts and they transfer flagellates when biting fish. Affected Asian sea bass or barramundi show signs of anorexia, lethargy, anemia, scale loss, intraocular haemorrhage and exophthalmia. Stained blood smears on slides show the presence of tapered trypanosomes by light microscopy, as can be seen in this image. Young fish are vulnerable and mortality can result from infection. Indeed, in 2004, trypanosoma was diagnosed as one of the primary causes of death in Australian sea cage barramundi. There is no practical treatment for management of trypanosomes, although eradication of leeches might have a protective effect. Udinium species are dinoflagellates that cause velvet disease in marine and freshwater environments. Outbreaks are usually associated with stress, including poor water quality and or poor fish health. These organisms bear two flagella from locomotion and infect the skin, fins and gills. Erginium species have life cycles similar to that of cryptocarrion irritans and Ichthyopsiris multifilis. Pyroform trophonts, as can be seen in this image here, are less than 160 micron and attached to the epidermis. Here they are attached to gill filaments. The attachment disc contains root-like rhizocysts which penetrate epithelial cells and destroy them, causing hyperplasia, fusion, fusion of the lamellae, and hemorrhages. Extreme infections result in a velvet-like layer of parasites on external surfaces. Infected fish are observed to rub their body against objects. This behaviour is known as flashing and many show uh, signs of anorexia, hyperventilation and mass mortality. Infection may be diagnosed through microscopy. Bath treatments can be recommended as well and can be effective. But please note that some chemicals may or may not be permitted for use in some countries. Bath treatments have been successful with copper sulfate and benzalconium chloride. Trichodina is a genus of ciliate protists whose species are ectocommensal or parasitic on aquatic animals, particularly fish. Trichodina are characterised by the presence of a ring of interlocking cytoskeletal denticles, as you can see in this image here. And these provide support for the cell and allow adhesion to surfaces, including the skin and gills. Trichodinids have a direct life cycle and reproduce by binary fission and occur in freshwater and marine environments. They feed by filtration and remove bacteria and organic particles from water. Trichodina are frequently found on the gills and inner operculum, and high population densities can impair osmoregulation and respiration. Clinical signs of infection include lethargy, anorexia, hyperventilation, and excessive mucus production. 
Diagnosis can be made through microscopic detection in scrapings from the skin or the gills. This parasite can be treated using formalin bathing, copper sulfate, sodium chloride and sodium percarbonate. Given that trichodina feed on organic matter, reducing the organic load and improving water quality can reduce uh, the population. Methods to reduce organic load include mechanical filtration combined with UV irradiation and ozonation. Chylodinella are single-celled ciliates and they're the causative agent of disease that affects the gills and skin of fresh water barramundi. This parasite remains a relatively common cause of disease of larger fish in freshwater pond systems in northern Queensland, Australia. Symptoms of infection include morbidity, mortality, lethargy and anorexia. Diagnosis can be made through microscopic detection in scrapings from the skin or the gills. Dense populations on the host epithelium inhibit norm normal physiological function, including osmoregulation, gas exchange and excretion. Chylodinella can be treated with formalin, copper sulfate, malachite green and methylene blue. White spot disease is a common disease caused by infection of the skin, fin and gills with a ciliated protozoan parasite that occurs in marine water, known as cryptocarrion irritans, or fresh water, which is Ichthyopthyrus multifilis. White spots, around about 0.4 to 0.8 millimetres on external fish surfaces, are actually encysted trophonts and they're feeding on host epidermis. The trophon escapes from the epidermis as pre-swimming tomont stage. Tomons insist by producing a gelatinous capsule and attach to substrate. And it's here that the tomocyst undergoes numerous cell divisions. In fact, one tomocyst can produce up to 1,000 free-swimming therons, and they escape from the tomocyst and search for a suitable host. And a recent study has shown that prevalence of infection in aquaculture barramundi does increase with temperature. The cryptocarrion is one of the major parasitic diseases that affect Asian sea bass that are kept in tanks for breeding. Infection is easily introduced by translocation of other infected fishes. The parasites are particularly persistent due to their low host specificity and their ability to rapidly complete their life cycle. So once the organism has established in a large culture facility, it can be very difficult to manage uh, due to its rapid life cycle and there also can be 100% mortality if it's left untreated. Infected fish might scratch or flash against the tank bottom or walls, and some will have visible white spots on the body. Microscopic diagnosis can be made by making skin scrapings and examining for trophonts. And the trophonts are characterized by horseshoe-shaped macronucleus and numerous moving cilia. Heavy infections of cryptocarrion reduce the osmoregulatory ability and can elicit hyperplasia and cellular infiltration, ultimately leading to mortality. Malachite green is an effective bath treatment. However, this treatment is not allowed for use in fish production facilities in all countries. A regular treatment of pond water with formalin, copper sulfate, sodium percarbonate, sodium chloride, hydrogen peroxide, or other disinfectants will kill therons and trophonts that are leaving the fish skin. Alternatively, salinity treatments such as lowering or increasing, increasing the salinity uh, can be used. In addition, quarantine measures should be taken when translocating stock. Another way of managing this um, parasite is through filtration of water with a mesh size of about 10 micron, which can trap the trophonts and tomonts and ease infection intensity in the stock. So numerous species of metazoan parasites have been implicated in disease outbreaks in barramundi. Metazoan parasites include multi-celled organisms that live on and within the body of their host. The common metazoan parasites include monogenians or haptoworms, Digenians, the flukes, cesto, the tapeworms, nematodes, roundworms, acanthocephalans, the spiny headed worms, leeches, and crustaceans.
Capsalid monogeny infections are the most serious and pathogenic amongst all of the parasitic diseases known from Asian sea bass, and if left untreated, fish quickly develop secondary infections. In Indonesia and Australia, monogeny infections have been associated with large losses and mortality rates of 30 to 40 per cent are common. The monogenians Neobenogenia melanii and Benogenia epinephili reported to infect Asian sea bass and notorious, allegedly generalist pathogens of tropical and subtropical fishes in aquaria and aquaculture worldwide. Both of these species attach to the skin of their host and graze on mucus and epidermis. They continuously lay eggs into the water, which hatch into ciliated larvae that can directly reinfect fish. Capsalid monogenians also irritate the eyes, causing opacity and exophthalmia, and gradually cause the caudal and pectoral fins to become frayed. High infection intensities on fish can lead to secondary infections by bacteria, ultimately resulting in emaciation and death. At least 10 diplectinid monogenian species infect the gills of maricultured barramundi. Here, infected fish exhibit a darkened body, pale gills, lethargy, loss of appetite, and excess mucus production. The established method of monogenian treatment involves recurrent acute bathing of infected stock, primarily in formalin, hydrogen peroxide, or fresh water solutions. And while these treatments will kill attached juveniles and adult stages, eggs are generally resistant and may exist outside the treatment area. A number of digenian species have been documented from wild and captive barramundi. And of these, the blood flukes, the family Aporocotylidae, have the most potential to become serious pathogens of hosts in mariculture. The adult parasites release eggs into the fish's vascular system, and these can be sequestered in the gill, the heart, the kidney, the liver, spleen, pancreas, or other organs. And here they cause inflammation and decrease the physiological and mechanical efficiency of these organs. A blood flukes can also be problematic in open or semi-closed aquaculture systems because the intermediate invertebrate host may inhabit areas close to farm fish, such as on cave structures or in sediment. Detection of adult flukes can be made in the blood vessels, while thin-shelled eggs can be detected in microscopy or histology. Curiocola lartes is known to infect farmed barramundi in Malaysia, Thailand and Australia, and Parasanguinicola vastispina infects cultured fish in Malaysia. So although these species have no known pathology, other fish blood fluke are considered a major threat to sustainable fish production and have been associated with mortalities of farmed amberjacks, or Cereola species, in the Spanish Mediterranean and Japan, and also in farmed tuna, Euthanus species, in Japan and Australia. Recent research indicates that orally delivered praziquantil may be the most effective treatment against blood fluke infections. Nematodes or roundworms are long, slender, cylindrical, unsegmented worms that are tapered at each extremity. A number of larval nematodes have been documented from wild and farmed barramundi, and larval nematodes have to complete their life cycle in a specific bird, fish or mammal species. Uh, but their larval stages may be able to survive in a large variety of intermediate hosts. The impacts of nematodes on host fishes can generally be described as benign or in need of further study. However, members of the Anasacidae, which have been reported from farm barramundi, can present a potential human health issue if they are consumed in raw or undercooked seafood. Nematodes generally exhibit complex life cycles, um, and so they may be excluded from farm fishes by maintaining clean, clean feed sources, such as an extruded pellet diet. Leeches occur in freshwater, brackish and marine environments. Leeches that feed exclusively on the blood of fishes can also be encountered living freely, since they may leave their host after feeding and not reattach to a new host until the last meal has been digested. 
Leeches attach to their host using anterior and posterior suckers and the fish leeches use their jaws to gain access to the blood um, and they may prevent clotting while feeding by injecting saliva that inhibits the host clotting enzyme. Most adult leeches detach from the host fish in order to lay cocoons on a chosen substrate which can include aquaculture structures such as moorings and nets. Cocoons contain a ring-shaped compartment that is effectively sealed from the environment and this protects the developing embryo. A heavy infestations of leeches have caused mortality in Asian sea bass fingerlings reared in sea cages in Malaysia. And clinical symptoms include anemia, body discoloration, scale loss, frayed fins and restless swimming. As previously mentioned, leeches also serve as a vector for other parasites and pathogens, including bacteria, viruses, and protozoa. Severe infestations can render fish unmarketable, as seen in this image here, due to unsightly leeches, frayed fins, hemorrhages, and swelling at the attachment and feeding sites. Some authors have found that a 50 part per million formalin bath uh, is effective for managing leeches and suggest drying culture facilities in order to desiccate leech cocoons. Several potential harmful Caligood copepod species or sea lice are known from wild and farmed barramundi and these include Caligus epidemicus, Caligus chiastus, Caligus orientalis, Caligus pagrosomi, Caligus rotunda genitalis and Caligus punctatus. So unlike other parasitic copepods, Caligus adults are capable of swimming and can leave one host to become attached to another. So they present a predominant threat to aquaculture due to their broad distribution, their direct life cycle and their low host specificity. So for example, Caligus epidemicus has been associated with mass mortalities of mullet and porgies in Australia and tilapia in Taiwan. So this species is known from sea cage barramundi in Malaysia. Caligus chiastus is also known from sea cage barramundi in Malaysia. And this species has been implicated in epizootics in southern bluefin tuna sea cage culture, where it can cause gross corneal damage. The hematophagus copepod Lenanthropus latus, pictured here, is of serious concern in brackish pond culture and sea cage culture of barramundi. Adult females attached to the primary gill filaments, while you may find smaller males on the gills or attached to females. Although Lenanthropus latus has not caused significant mortality in aquaculture, their presence is usually associated with poor fish health. And parasites can cause irreparable damage to the gills by way of their mode of attachment and their feeding activity. Disease problems include hemorrhages, hyperplasia and necrosis along the secondary lamellae of the gill filaments. There are no known treatments, although hydrogen peroxide bathing is currently being trialled in Australia. Cymothoids are ectoparasitic isopods on marine brackish and freshwater fish, and in most cases they're blood feeders and occur on the body, in the mouth or in the branchial cavity of the host fish. Five somethoid isopod parasite species infect wild or farmed Asian sea bass uh, and infections of farmed hatchery sea bass in the branchial and anterior dorsal regions by somethoid indica um, are known to result in lesions and are associated with lower growth rates and mortality. Um, in this particular instance, the parasite was believed to have been introduced hatchery with fish through wild zooplankton used as a feed. So consequently, infections could be reduced by filtering wild zooplankton to remove the infectious swimming larvae or alternatively using other live feeds. Other species of cymothoid are only known from wild fishes and the associated pathology for these species is unknown. So the biodiversity of pathogens and parasites that may infect barramundi and the appropriate mechanisms to treat infections is an area of continued research effort. So effective parasite management really focuses on reducing stress, uh, preventing the introduction of pathogens and parasites in the first instance, and the use of effective drugs and vaccines where they are available. 
So understanding the source and the transmission of infectious pathogens and parasites can really enable proactive management strategies. Continued reliance on wild conspecifics for broodstock uh, really enables vertical and horizontal pathogen transmission. So as our knowledge of Faramundi disease increases and we understand more of the biology of pathogens and optimal rearing conditions, we can really improve our management strategies to help avoid diseases in the first place and increase productivity. Thus, I, th I think it's crucial to further our knowledge of the diseases pathogens and parasites that infect or are likely to infect Faramundi as a basis for developing management strategies. So if you would like a list of references uh, that we used for this presentation, please feel free, free to contact me at my email address. And also please note that photo credits are provided for image copyright and that some of the photos used in this presentation are representative only.